Hmm. Christian Cage comes out for a promo. Makes fun of North Carolina. Everyone here is related. Everyone here is second best. Michael Jordan is second best to LeBron James. Ric Flair is second best to me. I feel disrespected by Darby Allen. As long as this... I totally forgot this match was happening, by the way. Uh, as long as this TNT title is in my possession, Darby Allen will never touch it. While you were doing kick flips and ollies on your skateboard, I was building a legacy, he says. At this point, out comes Arn and Brock Anderson. Arn points out, this is... Uh, here we are in Greensboro. This is Horseman Country. I thought you were in the Horseman in Greensboro 35 years ago. <laughs> wow. Arn points out Christian Cage is not the TNT champion. The Sea Monster, as he put it, is the TNT champion. They go back and forth for a while. Christian says, there are no more open challenges, but I will make an exception for you. Arn says, listen, as a younger man, I would get in there, spine buster your narrow ass, and walk out with that title. But I'm, I've got a, somebody else to fight for me. And then Brock Anderson <laughs> removed his jacket. So wait, are you telling me that we saw Luchasaurus against Brock Anderson? Boy, howdy, did we. Uh, okay. So it has been 16 months since the last time Brock Anderson had a match on AEW TV. Hopefully, it will be at least that long before we see him again. Uh, I'm going to steal this line from at Philly Leotard Zero on Twitter. Okay. Brock Anderson has the gear of his dad from the 1980s, the hair of his dad from the 1990s, and the physique of his dad from a Georgia bar in the 2000s. Wow. Brock gets in there. First of all, he takes that jacket off, and I thought, I might be in better shape than him. Then he gets in the ring. And it, I was pointing out, it's a valid point. Just the idea they did Luchasaurus versus Brock Anderson through a commercial break is ridiculous. Did you actually watch Brock wrestle in this match? Oh, man, did I ever. Because you know what? What was that last match that he had, you said, Vinny? Uh, 16 months ago. It was like an eight-man tag. I have to look up. Right okay. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. Can you look up and find out the last right. like singles match he had on Dynamite? Because he had like one match on last Dynamite. Last singles match on Dynamite. Yeah, he had like right. one match on Dynamite. Bear with me. You, you make your point here. Well, my here. point was I watched him in that match, and it was like one of his first ever matches. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, you know, it's not like great, but it's it's fine. You know, it wasn't horrible. And uh, that was how, that was. You got to find uh, out how long ago that was. August twenty fifth, twenty twenty one. So f two years ago, almost to the day. Two years ago, he had a two minute match with Malachi Black and lost. Okay, oh, yeah, okay. I remember watching that and thinking, you know, he's all right. It's two minutes. You know, he's with Malachi, whatever is all right. And yes, that does appear to be his only singles match in Dynamite. Okay, <laughs> well, it's now been two years, and God bless the guy. I think he was worse now than he He's was in that significantly match worse. with Malachi Black. Like, He's what? much worse. I thought he, I thought I might look better than he did, and I was thinking I might be able to wrestle better than he could in this match. He can't run the ropes. He was dead waiting for a choke slam. He was just bad, 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 bad. There was nothing good about Brock Anderson here, and he was out there for 10 minutes. I'm watching him thinking, does this guy really want to be a pro wrestler? Is that his goal, to be a successful wrestler and seen on television and a big star? Because there's no evidence that he's trying to achieve this. I will be nice and and say something about myself. I would never take off my shirt and uh, think that it'd be okay for me to step into the ring. Brock, you should never take off your shirt and be okay to step in the ring. No. You are not in cosmetic shape to do so. Why don't we talk about the bigger issue here that's hovering over this entire show? Oh, he can't hover. He's Where is everybody? Well, that's a good question. Why is there no talent on Collision? Well, the, the Bullet Club goal is ah. here. None of them wrestled. Well, maybe we'll hear more about this later on. I see. So this goes on for 10 minutes. It's uh, pretty much all Luchasaurus beating him up for all 10 minutes. Uh, I have been told that those in strange places such as Canada, where they could watch the stuff between the breaks, that uh, what we missed was even worse than what we saw, which I'm stunned by. Uh, so in the end, Brock counters the DVD by falling down. He throws a few punches. He is supposed to get choke slammed, but like he won't go up for it. No. And Luchasaurus is a big, strong dinosaur, but Brock's big. So he didn't go up for having this choke slam, and Lucha pinned him with a shot to the back of the head. A poor match this was. A poor, poor match. Had a good tan. Darby flies in out of nowhere. He this Darby, this Darby segment, this saved the whole segment. Oh yeah, in a way it did. Darby comes in, 
And by the way, how come Swerve and A.R. Fox and Prince Nana haven't been banned from wrestling for a month for showing up at someone's fucking house? I don't know. And assaulting him with glass. Furthermore, why haven't they been arrested? That's a fucking crime. Yeah. That's a crime. Even Ricky Everett. Starks attacked a referee. That happens all the time. This was a crime. Yeah, you can't even do that in Everett. That's a good point. Oh. Yeah. And you can do a lot of shit in Everett. Oh, yeah. Anyway. So anyway, Darby comes out. And uh, he runs wild with his skateboard, takes everybody out. Crowd's chanting for Darby. So then, Darby says, You're a dinosaur, right? A dinosaur. You've been around 65 billion years, right? And all of a sudden, in the background, you hear Luchasaurus, who never talks. You just hear him go, Million! He was so offended. He would not stand for 65 billion years How in his old? age. I'm not an old dinosaur. It's 65 yeah. million years. And by the way, young Darby, first off, it's not 65 billion. He's right. It's 65 million. And he's also wrong because my daughter is now into dinosaurs. Hmm. And we're all old. And uh, and the latest estimate is 66 billion years. Oh, my God. Now, how the fuck they found out that it was actually 66 and not 65, I don't got any fucking idea. But that's the uh, that's the current number. So everybody update your uh, your age of the Luchasaurus, because much like Christopher Daniels, it is wrong on Wikipedia. Anyway, Darby. Uh... He goes, hey, you've been around 65 billion years. You ever had a skateboard shoved up your ass? And when you think about it, if you've been alive 65 million years, I mean, there's a decent chance you've had a skateboard shoved up your ass. Because that's a long fucking time. But the dinosaur looked like he hadn't. No, he did, did not. He certainly didn't uh, confirm. No. No. No, he looked like he was mad about that. So Darby has a title match against Luchasaurus, who is champion in case you've forgotten. Uh, I forget when that match is. Oh, it's all out. That's it all out. Uh, Darby is challenging Christian Cage for a match on Collision next week, and Christian accepts. You know, you've said some stupid things in your life, but you just assume that if you're alive for a really long time, at some point, Fuck you're going Listen. You'll be moving. You know you'll drop some stuff and fall down the stairs. To the three of us? If you, if you took the biography of all three of us and put it together, you're talking 120 years. A lot of shit has happened to the three of us in 120 years, okay? Close now you're talking 65 million fucking years. Guaranteed one of the three of us would have a skateboard shoved up their ass in that period. Guaranteed. Probably buy one of the other ones. <laughs> Probably. Good chance. Yes. Good chance. Stop at the trucks. Shivani interviews Powerhouse Hobbs, who is bigger than ever. Just a monster. He's cutting a great promo about coming out of the darkness and inflicting violence, 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 and it's the Book of Hobbes, and he's awesome in there, and the stupid crowd is giving him the what treatment. So he explains that his next chapter is about redemption, how to redeem myself after losing the TNT title, how to redeem myself after losing the One Heart Tournament, how do I redeem myself? By calling out the Redeemer. The place goes crazy. Miro comes out. And I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be a hoss fight for the ages. Mm-hmm. Miro is jumped at ringside by the duo of Aaron Solo and Nick Camarado. Hobbs hangs out in the corner, just watches. He doesn't seem to have much of a reaction at all to this. Not surprised. He's not upset. Uh, he's just, just observing. They throw Miro into the ring. He kills the two of them, but then when he turns around, Hobbs drops him with a spine buster. This was great. This was all quite great. Well, that'll be a mean guy match if I ever saw one. So I was under the impression that Hobbs just doesn't want to be around all these QT Marshall Geeks. That's what he said. And he let them beat up Miro. Whatever their business with Miro, that's nothing to do with him. That's fair. Yeah, okay. He's bided his time. He didn't tell them to show up, but they showed up. He didn't ask for a gold chain, but that's QT fair. offered a gold chain. He took the gold chain. He didn't ask to be helped. These guys showed up to help. He took the help. And, he, and he's very appreciative, and he likes the gold chain he made note of. That's true. That's true. I'm calling it down Granny's memory lane. Are you oh. reading from your memoirs? Yes. No, no, okay. no. That's past. Oh, okay. This yeah, is new stuff. This is more up to date. You know, I'm I more... see. Okay. This is the more recent stuff. Yeah, new old stuff. I just No, said. no, okay. no, no. Okay. <laughs> the New Testament. Everyone let her go. We lived on a farm 10 miles east of Baker. More yeah. recent, you say. <laughs> I was going to say, this isn't new. No, this is old. It's old. Okay. Okay. 
Who said new? I didn't say new. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, we're just going to be not, quiet. And you, am I out of my you, mind? No, yes, we're all out of our minds. <laughs> now I'm upset. <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> I'll, I, I'm fining Vinny. Vinny, you're being fined $100. Oh. It was Martell's and Heebs. Heebs? Was Martell. <laughs> the Heebs. The Heebs. And the Heebs only had one daughter named Alice. Yeah. What's so funny about the name? The Heebs? The daughter Alice, uh, she knew how to yodel, and she was what what she'd call nowadays a rebel. The yodeling rebel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Granny, if I may interrupt, what did they call her back then? Alice. Okay. <laughs> You thought I wasn't going to like this segment, Granny? This is the best segment we've had on the show in years. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the Join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click Join today and don't miss out.